I've had my Tesla Powerwall for about two weeks now, maybe three. And uh, while it seemed good initially, uh, I found out as I've got more familiar with the way it works that not everything was what it seemed. Now, the main problem, as you know, what I had with it was it wants a link to Tesla all the time. It wants to be connected to Tesla. And that's basically so they can get your usage data. Now, I firewalled that off, so it has no link to Tesla. What I didn't know that was by doing that, if it, if it doesn't have a link to Tesla for 24 hours, it'll reboot. And the reboot takes about two minutes. Now, during that reboot, there is no power. So I think it's pretty ordinary that a device that's basically there for, for backup power will reboot just for the hell of it if it hasn't had a link to Tesla for 24 hours. Now, Tesla have claimed that it still delivers power during that reboot, but that's not true. I've, uh, I'll show you in a minute, I've done some uh, SNMP monitoring using a, a Linux box to interrogate the uh, power wall and get the, the data from it and then present it as SNMP to my um, network management. And what I noticed was at night time, like now when I'm using a certain amount of power as the battery is decreasing at a steady rate, during the reboot time, there's no measurements, fair enough, but when it comes back, the battery charge was exactly what it was before. Also, there is an energy meter, like the energy exported meter, same as you have on a power meter at home for what you import from the grid, there's an energy meter. And when it came back on, the number that it exported had not, had not changed, it, was, it had still only exported, and that's from the lifetime of the unit, so, so that's the second thing. And the third thing is, uh, the uptime of the actual power wall had reset. So there's two uptimes, there's the uptime of the gateway and the uptime of the power wall. And when this reboot happens, they both reset. Now, like on the interface here, if I manually stop the power wall and start it again, the computer aspect in the, in the gateway, that's still up and running. But the uptime on the power wall will, will reset. But uh, when it reboots, the computer's rebooting and the power wall, not just one or the other. So that's, that's pretty disappointing because that was my main aim of having the power wall was for backup power. Now, if that's doing a reboot during a grid outage, then I'll have no power, unless it's sunny and the solar's still coming in, but it's not what it was marketed to be. So I think it's pretty bad that it requires a network link to operate. So hopefully they'll fix that in firmware, but I think they just, just want your data. This uptime here under API Sitemaster, that seems to be the power wall because if you go to the uh, interface here and stop it manually and start it again, that'll reset the uptime here. So that the computer's obviously still running for this web interface, but the power wall uptime will reset. Now, the API status link, this uptime is the computer in the gateway, so it seems. Now that's the one that resets but when I say that's the one that resets, they both reset during that uh, outage that happens 24 hourly. Now, another thing to just be careful of, down here, if you do run this wizard, by doing so, that will stop the power wall as well, but that's, that's not a big drama, because that's something you would be manually doing. But just by itself, these two will reset, so the whole uptime will, will restart. Now, this link is the one that gives all the information about um, what's going on electrically with the system, and what I noticed during that time, the, the battery energy exported. Now this, this number here is the energy that is exported from, from day one. Okay, that just keeps going up, it never resets. Okay, it's like the power meter in the, in the house. It's just a one-way thing. So what I noticed is that also didn't change during the outage. What I've got here is a display of the common aspects that it want to monitor of the system. And the way I've done it is I've used a Linux box to interrogate the power wall, get those power level and measurements from the API, and I'm presenting them as SNMP. So I made an application in Libra NMS to uh, poll that Linux box, and it passes back SNMP these various values. Now the main one is the battery charge. If there's nothing else to care about, it's the battery charge. And um, I've got an overall one though here of the four main things, which is the solar power, the load power, which is the house, the battery and the grid. Now that's basically a composite display of these four down here. So I've got solar for the day, 
the week, and it goes it goes up to two years on this. Uh, power consumption, battery display, uh, sorry, battery supply, and the grid supply. And that there was when the battery was charged, nothing more going in the battery. It was now feeding to the grid. And as I said, the one at the top is just the um, composite of all them. Now, that data is fine for me to have, but I don't really feel the need for anyone else to have it. You know, when was he here? What was he doing? That sort of thing. Not necessarily paranoia, just no need for them to have it. That's really what it comes down to. One thing I tried was just allowing it access to Tesla in the middle of the night between three and four in the morning, um, just to see if that would keep it stable when I wasn't actually doing much. But what I found was um, during that hour, our time, we've got all the SSL traffic here, but if we have a look at it, you can see that in that hour, it transferred 12 meg, oh sorry, 13 meg, but um, if we go, there we go, from Tesla, there was 555k, to Tesla was 12 meg, so it's obviously just getting data from here and sending it up to Tesla, it's not like it's just checking to do a firmware upgrade and upgrading if it needs it, it's, it's absolutely getting data from the site here, which I don't agree to. Another point that came up was about the warranty. Basically, they told me it's the four year warranty if it's not connected or 10 year if it is. Now, going from the word, wording that's here, you must consent to the privacy policy to register your Powerwall and monitor it in the Tesla mobile app. Well, this is registered, so that, that bit's done. Then it says, if you do not consent to the Tesla customer privacy policy, we may be unable to honor the full 10 year warranty. Okay, Tesla will honor the warranty for at least four years following the date your power wall is installed for the first time, subject to the exclusion and limitations set out in the warranty. So basically they're saying if you don't connect it to them and give them all your data, they'll only have a warranty for four years as opposed to 10. Now if that's not reason to shop around, I don't know what is. That local application that runs on the web page here, that's, um, that's all JavaScript, and you, you can see there's 40,000 odd lines of code here, which you could probably tear a lot of it out to just get the actual display, because this program includes all the setup program and everything, so a lot of it's not necessary for just monitoring the thing. But um, I don't know Java, so I'm not going to tear that apart, but I'm sure someone will end up doing it. As I said, the most important thing you'll ever want to see on the Powerwall anyway is the amount of battery charge that's in there. And uh, that LCD that I was making the other day and putting on the Raspberry Pi was for this purpose. So I can see pretty easily just here on the desk how much battery charge is in it. That's about all you... In the, in the scheme of things, in reality, that's all you really care about is, is it charged up or not. Now the reason I know this is because I've done a lot of looking into how the system operates. Most people who have a power wall probably won't do this. And so they'll just be unaware that if their grid goes out while it's doing a reboot, they probably won't even know it's doing reboots, but if they do, um, and the grid goes out, then they'll have an outage too. So I think that's, that's a big fail there from Tesla's part there, because they've made it so this internet connection is a point of failure, which is bad design. Now there's gotta be other vendors out there selling similar products, and if, well there are a few, there's gonna be more, and Tesla themselves now told me, when I put this to them, they said, it's not an uninterruptible power supply, so it can be interrupted. Now, that's not the impression I got when I bought it, so had I known that, I simply wouldn't have got the power wall. So keep that in mind if that's what you plan on getting it for.